kick off the show with a real bang. <laughs> Oh, thank God for that, mate. I thought you were a goner. You want to get my ass out of the water, otherwise you'll empty the lake. <laughs> What makes a criminal a criminal? Is it perhaps a cry of childhood or a hostile environment? What makes a criminal a criminal? The stripy T-shirt, the mask and the large bag with swag written on it. And what makes a criminal frequent such low dives as the Purple Pussy Club? <laughs> Inspector Bribeasy and Sergeant Adolf Porno were sent to investigate. This is a bit of a knocking shop with it, sir. Yeah. But this is where we're going to find Eddie Supergrass. And if anyone knows anything, it'll be him. Not a nice place, is it, sir? Sex for sale, porno. I wouldn't be found dead in a place like this. It's despicable. Hello, Inspector Bribeasy. I haven't seen you around here for days. Uh, good evening, madam. I don't think we've had the pleasure. Here, uh, I didn't come here Saturday, so I miss you. All right. <laughs> Hello, Inspector. I've been a top super grass for nigh on 60 years, I have. I've informed on all the big crimes, I have. Hello, Eddie. 60 years of super grass, <laughs> Have you heard anything about the King's Cross murders? No, thanks. I'm a super cross. Have you heard anything? Write <laughs> the question down, Porno. For the right price, Inspector, I'll tell you anything you want. Tell me your man someone good in bed. Later. <laughs> I've heard a whisper. I think a good man for you to talk to would be... Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna... Look after him, Porno! Stop! You can leave him alone! He's getting away! Quick, stop the first vehicle that comes along, Porno! Well done, Porno. Now put your foot down. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> this is sir. How could you go any faster, Paul? I'm on me from the floor here, sir. Come on. Stop, thief! <laughs> I think he's shaking us off. Who's when he got on that jet plane, sir? <laughs> I think that's when we lost him. Si, <laughs> <laughs> senores. Uh, we would like a room, please. For two. Yes, please. <laughs> Bathroom? Uh, yes. Carmen? Make up two beds in the bathroom. <laughs> like breakfast, sir. You eat breakfast. It's nearly midnight. I meant in the morning. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, yes, please. Would you like anything now, sir? Uh, yes, yes, I'll have cornflakes, bacon and egg, toast and marmalade and a pot of tea. <laughs> and I'll have a kipper. Now for another report about that American raid. On the telephone now is our foreign affairs correspondent, Mike Airy. The town of Trumpton was rudely awoken this morning by the sound of American F-111 bombers. The dawn attack was aimed at various 
closest targets in the town, and from our hotel window I can see smoke rising from what remains of the old lady who sold flowers in the town. <laughs> the town's main industry has been badly damaged. Apparently, Windy Miller was standing outside his windmill, whistling for the wind, when he was hit by a 500-pound high-explosive bomb. Um, how are the emergency services actually coping with the situation? Mike? Well, the fire service, being Pew Pew, Barney McGrew, <laughs> were apparently trying to disarm a thousand pound fragmentation bomb. An eyewitness report has said that they were last seen hitting the bomb with little wooden hammers and singing a bomb disposal song when it went off. Mike, what's the general feeling of the people of Trumpton? The mood here is one of bitterness, anger and resentment. This is perhaps best summed up by the local chief of police, a PC McGarry number 452, who said, Deary, deary me, what's all this then? This is Mike Perry for BBC Television News in Trumpton. <laughs> And finally, financial news. The pound has had another quiet day. It got up late, had a crap, and read the <laughs> Lane, my mum sent me to a child psychiatrist. That didn't feel right. Talking about my sex life to a five-year-old. <laughs> Come in. Did you... <laughs> Did you, did you want to see me, Sir Robert? Yes, come in, Peter. Sit down. <laughs> Peter, there's been a terrible, terrible, terrible disaster. Oh, dear. A Chilean nuclear reactor has gone into meltdown. Gosh. You know what that means. Carnage. Chile con carnage. <laughs> the whole of the peninsula is covered with a dense cloud of nuclear radiation that will wipe out all human life now and for centuries to come. An invisible, deadly blanket of radiation covers the land, striking down every living thing that moves, crawls, or walks on the surface of the Earth. Oh, dear. And I want you to be our man on the spot. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> you will be the man at the meltdown. Here are your tickets. Check in time, half an hour. Good luck, Peter, and goodbye. Uh, yes, oh, 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 excuse, oh, excuse me, sir. I'm terribly sorry. Do, do you think... Could, could I just go over there again? Oh, come on, Peter. Time is money. Time is money. Fine, yes. Um, you, you, want, you want me to fly to San Diego? Yeah? No, you can't fly to San Diego. There's a, there's a cloud of nuclear radiation hanging oh, over the ruddy yeah. place. No, no, you'll fly to Guatemala and go the rest of the way in a dugout canoe. <laughs> um, sir, I mean, don't, 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 don't mm? you think it'll be rather, um... Rather what? Well, rather dangerous. <laughs> Dangerous. Danger is my middle name, Peter. Yeah, but it's not you that's going, is it? <laughs> Peter, think back. Have I ever asked you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself, have I? Well, no, sir. Well, I am now. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on, Peter. I expected more of you than this. You're Peter Pillspatter, investigative journalist. Yes, your name is synonymous with selfless commitment, a lust for danger, fearlessness in the front line. <laughs> I'm the sports editor, sir. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to for a couple of QPR men. Oh, come on, Peter, this is a newspaper business. Yes, sir. A man has got to do what a man's got to do. Yes, I think I might have done it already, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, executive facility. Sit down, Peter. Well, I'd, I'd better not if that's how it is. Sit down. <laughs> Look me in the eye, Peter. Yes, sir. I know what you're worried about. Radiation protection. <laughs> well, radiation, radiation protection, yes. Yeah. An impervious suit. Oh, no, no. An impervious suit, yes. Yeah. Yes, which stops the gamma rays from doing any damage whatsoever to the camera. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no chance of having this some of this suiting run up into a nice sort of safari outfit, is there? <laughs> That's a nice idea, Peter, but it won't wash. Yeah, well, I, w I wasn't thinking of washing it at all, actually. I thought I'd just keep it on, you know. Like, so, uh, yeah. Is he whizzing? Let's get busy. Yes, sir, yes. yes. Oh, there's, now, there, there is just one thing. Yes. I'm not going. <laughs> you can't send me to my certain doom, sir. I'll die of radiation sickness. I could get you the best bone marrow money can buy. Please, sir. Please, I've, I've just got married. Yes, well, we all make mistakes, Peter. No, it's not a mistake. I love my wife. What do you know of love? You don't know anything of love. All you think about is stories, stories, stories. That is a damn lie. And if you repeat it, I'll splash it all over the front page. <laughs> think of my fragrant bride of only three weeks. 
All right, Peter, all right. I'm not an unreasonable man. I can see your point of view. Thank you very much. So just this once, you can take her with you. <clears throat> <laughs> Janet, get me one more ticket for Guatemala. Single. Yeah. Life can be full of those annoying little jobs. Washing the dog. Building rabbit hutches at the bottom of the garden. Or unblocking that guttering. <laughs> now we have the answer to all of those domestic chores. You need Ooh. Old Tom. <laughs> old Tom is everything an odd job man should be. He's slow, he's deaf, and he won't touch anything electrical. And the new improved Old Tom won't need to use your loo because he's always gone before he came. <laughs> old Tom is cheap, slightly racist, and guaranteed not to die on the job. Available from most good old people's homes. <laughs> and if Old Tom doesn't suit you, do your own odd jobs, you lazy bastards. <laughs> you know my idea of the ideal woman? Yeah, go on in. Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah, Marilyn. Big, busty, blonde, American and rich. Yeah. It's a pity you married that scrawny redhead from Glasgow. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, if I had been with Marilyn rather than uh, Cheryl... Yeah. Oh, I don't think I'd have got a seven-year itch, you know. No, no. Well, no, you shouldn't have waited seven years anyway, really. I mean, once you've got it, it's best to go down the clinic, isn't it? Quite <laughs> quite <laughs> quite <laughs> quite no, not that. It's not that. It's a seven-year itch. You've heard of a seven-year itch. It's, you know, when you're married and, you know, you're, you, you know, you sort of fancy somebody else for a change, oh, see, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the four-day itch, isn't it? No, <laughs> seven, a seven-year yeah, itch. Yeah. God, I, mean, I mean, look, Marilyn actually made it famous in one of her very best films. Oh, what, you mean in Some Like It Hot? That's the one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was marvellous, she was marvellous. She was one. fantastic, oh, Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I could have been happy with her, you know. Mm, yeah. I could, I could have been happy with Marilyn. Mind you, I wonder whether, like, a famous film star, right, with world renown and beauty like her, would have been married with an unemployed, happy with an unemployed gas fitter from Peckham, do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know, you see, I don't know, because if you look at it, she married some very odd people. Some yeah. very odd people indeed. Did she? Well, oh. you might have been all right then, after all. <laughs> well, no, no, you've got, you've got, you've got, like, uh, yeah. Joe de Majojo. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was a basketball that's player. Right, yes, was, there was yes. a very famous playwright. Oh, that's right. Arthur, Arthur Mallard. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> then there was the bloke who used to fix washing machines. William Bendix, <laughs> and, uh, and a monk. That's right, yeah. So yeah, she, yeah, so, well, yeah. she put it about a bit then, and you know, like in her short and glittering life. Yeah, yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was all summed up, wasn't it, really, in, in that Elton John song? Mm. Crocodile Rock. <laughs> no. Goodbye, Norma Jean. Oh, yeah. That's marvellous, isn't Goodbye, it? Goodbye, Norma Jean. Though I never knew you was blowing it like a candle that was snuffed out. Yeah. In the wind. That's right. Candling yeah. in the wind. Yes. Oh, it's a marvellous, marvellous lyric, that is, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I'll tell you what I like about it, though. What's that? The words. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I mean, don't think like it was a, it was a, he made a mistake there calling her Norma Jean, didn't he, really? What are you I mean, talking about, Norma one? Jean? Norma Jean was her real name, wasn't it? Before she changed it. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, what did she change it to, then? <laughs> Marilyn Monroe! Oh, yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Well, she would have to, because, you know, that was like, well, she wouldn't have been famous. I no, exactly. Know, no. Marilyn Monroe, yeah, mm. she's mysterious. Could have, could have, the mysterious thing about Marilyn, you know, yeah. was about her death. Was it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, nobody could make up their mind whether she was dead or not. No. <laughs> no they didn't know how she died yes. or why she died. Oh, yeah. Mm. There was, uh, there was a lot of, because, I mean, I know a lot about it, so yeah, I have to tell you. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people reckon yeah. that she died... Yes. ...because she was carrying President Kennedy's child. Well, that's stupid, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you think you could afford a pram or a push down or something like that, President Kennedy? No, 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 not, push, no, not carrying like carrying. Oh. I mean, carrying like... Oh, up you know, the she was up the dark. Oh, yeah. with President Kennedy's doodads. With President yeah. Kennedy. Oh, yeah, with yeah. President Kennedy. Oh, blimey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it, uh, he was the uh, uh, president. The president, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. And you see, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, they didn't want no scandal. No, like, obviously not. They didn't want no scandal, did no. they? So they tried to keep it quiet, hushed oh, it up, brushed oh, it under the carpet. Oh, you see. I see. 
They murdered a pregnant film star. That's right. Yeah. 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 That would keep it quiet. That's sort of. right. Yeah. No, but I mean, you know, that's one of the theories. Obviously, there are other theories about her death. Some say she committed suicide. Mm. Some say she just went driving with his brother. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 Monica, they're talking about death. I mean, there you are now. Kennedy's death. Now, there's a funny thing. Yeah. Do you know they mm. reckon that everybody, everybody in the world knows where they were and what they were doing when President Kennedy died? Uh, he's dead, is he? <laughs> So can I have it back when you finish with it? If you are of a nervous indisposition, do not watch this. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The big lady is asleep on her bed. No sign of life. It is the dead of the night. Oh my goodness. What is that mysterious wind? <laughs> Oh no, can it be? Are these vampire bats? Is one of those bats in disguise bats? Hey up, the big woman's at it. Dun, 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 dun. It is the man bat. <gasps> Look at those fangs. Look out, lady, here he comes. Will nothing stop this beast? Well, that one for a start. He has evil things on his mind. And something bloody nasty in his mouth. <laughs> it is too late. It is too late. The evil geezer has her in his power. She is now the wife of Dracula. <laughs> on his favourite plank of wood in Transylvania. <laughs> it stills the dead of night, by the way, folks. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? There he is. <laughs> Wait a moment. Got hold of this, says the doctor. Quick, doctor, before it's daylight. Uh... Or night time, or wherever it's supposed to be, anyway. One of the things. The man bat has mysteriously disappeared and been replaced uh. by a Batman. Well done, Doctor. What a good bloke. Good riddance, Batman. Thank you and good and <laughs> Oh, this is nothing. This is a bit of gas on the end. Well, I mean, that is the oldest daughter of the man back there. Poking around or something. Oh, I remember this. Now. Yeah, she'd had a lot of trouble with her baby. The baby's in here. baby out, will you? She dropped it in the stingers. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Did You See? My guests this week are Mel Smith and Griff Reese jones Hello. Hello. So, first of all, Griff, what did you think of the first in the new series by Faye Hamper, You Can Look, But Don't Touch? <laughs> which, one, which one was that? The series about child prostitution oh, in New Orleans. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> when, when, when was that on, exactly? About nine o'clock. On Thursday? No, Friday. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I missed that one. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, just a couple of friends, you see, and we, 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 we always play five a side at the Sabel Sports Centre, and, that, I, I, you know, I couldn't cancel it, and I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's awfully bad of me, isn't it? <laughs> well, Mel, what did you feel about that one? <laughs> 
it was all there, wasn't it? I mean, it was, it was, it was very, very good. I thought, the, I mean, I thought they were all very, very good, really. And what about the murder? Um, yeah, the murder. Oh God! I mean, I really, I hate murder. I mean, I, I don't, people shouldn't murder. Definitely. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not on, is it, to murder? No. I mean, no. You didn't see it either, did you? <laughs> no, no, I, no, I didn't. Um, well, I was, I was at a restaurant. It was a sort of business meeting. Kind of went on a bit. Couldn't. Couldn't get it. Uh, but, but I did see the thing on uh, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Yes, so did I. Yeah. Yes. Great. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought Peter O'Toole coped admirably with the role that Olivier made so much his own 30 years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 for me, uh, Lineker was the dominating influence on the film. Well, I mean, I mean Lineker and Beardsley, I mean, the way they actually worked together. I'm sorry, this is Strindberg, Wednesday. BBC Two? Oh! <laughs> BBC One! Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> and finally, the South Bank documentary. My <laughs> bloody video. I'm going to have to have it fixed, <laughs> honestly. Because it keeps recording the wrong channel, you know. I'm just... Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> well, I, I, did I saw the last five minutes of it, actually. But then my mother rang up. Uh, <laughs> so I... Because I, I, I had to... Um, but, I mean, it looked good. <laughs> Was it good? I now declare this inner city recreational area open. <laughs> right, sir. I should warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used as evidence. Anything? Oh, yes. Right, lad. No, no, not the face. Now <laughs> <laughs> that's hurting, not the groin. You've ruptured my spleen. <laughs> the five of you are killing me. You're killing me. Oh, oh, oh. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Oh, no. As a member of the cabinet, I am privileged to live in an area where there is a conservative council. That way, I get the opportunity to buy my own rent boy. <laughs> Ladies and customers, Tonight, we have a very important announcement to make to you all. Yes, we have been in consultation with members of the government at the very lowest level, and we are here to tell you it's been decided to sell us off to the country. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the privatisation of Smith and Jones. <laughs> Possibly the last of the great share offers, certainly the first of the extremely stupid share offers. This is the big one! Last, everybody in the country will be able to buy shares in us. That's right. There will be about 50 million shares in Griff and just over 100 million shares in Matt. <laughs> this is a fantastic opportunity for the people of Great Britain to buy a stake in the future of British comedy and to make two young men very wealthy indeed. <laughs> what will this mean for the future? In the interests of efficiency, we will be split up into two companies. <laughs> British Melco. <laughs> Welsh Griffco. <laughs> and of course, we'll be selling off some of our less profitable assets, such as this outmoded funny face, <laughs> this unprofitable gesture, <laughs> and this surplus to requirements wig. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity, however, to point out that this will not affect in any way the service that we intend to offer. Though, obviously, it will take a lot longer to have your telephone installed. <laughs> Not that this has anything to do with us. No, I was just warning everybody what's going to happen anyway. So, <laughs> if you're the sort of person who'd like to take advantage of this amazing Smith Griffco share offer, this is the easy to use ordinary share application document. <laughs> and this is the dangerous to use extraordinary share application document <laughs> for Guinness employees and Keith Best. <laughs> now, now, 
A lot of thought has gone into our slogan. We have finally come up with something which we hope will adequately reflect the mood of the nation as well as capturing the spirit of the offer. <laughs> Long vehicle. Ah. What's your name now? Saucy Susan, Naughty Nina, Raunchy Rowena, Chesty Cheryl. Elizabeth. Oh, cheeky Elizabeth. No, anyway. Elizabeth. Beth, Beth. Busty Beth, is it? Big Betty, Lusty Lizzie, Luscious Lusty Lizzie. No. Whoa, Thin Lizzie, is it? Leggy Liz. Hey, hey. He smells of boots in his sweaty suit, and his wallet's full of plastic. He talks like an IRR DJ, and he records. So, uh, where are we going in? Naughty nights in Norberton, is it? Swinging South London, saucy suburbia, passion in Purfleet, passion in Putney, purple passion. Passion Pro, my purple nights of passion in Parsons Brew. Boxer. Boxer, Boxer. Sexy SW8, saucy south of the river, snared near Stockwall. Foxel, Foxel, Foxel. Vice, Foxel Vice. I crack the Voxel Vice ring. My nights of vice in Voxel with a woman they dub Leggy Liz. He's got a job to do, and he does it well. Place, is it? Yeah. Your love nest, London love nest, Lambeth love nest, middle man of Barry, is it? No. Pity nights of vice with walks all vow, not Veronica, is it? Vera, you're not a virgin at all, a vet. Your father a vicar. His breath will spin, boom, drink. It'll make your skin go quickly, straight in, straight out, don't hang about. At least it's over quickly. Two in a bed, sex rocks in London, love nest, randy, rendezvous, naughty night, naughty nighty nights in naughty knickers, confessions of hot hostess with sex for sale on Sun Splash, South London, slut scandal. Nooky, nicky, nicky, nonsense, says Neff, nicky, nonnitten. Nooky, nicky, nicky, knackers, nice legs, 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 eleven thighs, thighs, thighs the limits. Lovely leggy limits, lovely luscious Lizzie's love lust, leggy legs, loony left, loony left legs. All my women, busty bets nights of two in a bed, passion with older men. Why, I prefer older men by the woman they dub long legged Liz, leg over. Oh, dearie me, she loved it. Inquirers, which town? 